World War III is not happening. We are nowhere near close to it. I know you guys are scared about China and Taiwan, Iran making strong threats against Israel and US interests, and of course the ongoing war between Russia and Ukraine. But that's nothing compared to recent history. China has been making strong threats to take Taiwan back since 1949. Iran can't afford a total war against Israel and the US. All they could do is just fun terrorism. Pakistan just slapped Iran around a few months ago and Iran thanked them for it. Read this article by Saeed Jafari. Iran talks a big game, but it's limited in its ability to respond to Israel. Let's go back to 1979 when Russia, then known as the Soviet Union, invaded Afghanistan for a quick military operation. This happened almost a year after the Iranian revolution, which destabilized the world because of the fluctuation and skyrocketing of oil prices. That revolt took away a lot of the US strategic power in the region. One year after Afghanistan was invaded, Iraq, one of the most powerful countries at the time, invaded Iran. And the following year, Israel launched a massive strike in Iraq, taking out their one nuclear reactor. And Israel did this around the same time they invaded southern Lebanon. While all of that was happening, Europe and America were freaking out because they thought the Soviets, at any second, were going to invade Western Germany. For those of you who don't know, after World War II, Germany was divided into two countries, East Germany, which belonged to Russia, and West Germany, which belonged to itself. People were convinced that the Soviet Union could easily fight a war on two fronts. And I remember as a kid, everyone thought that the nukes were coming for us and we were gonna get wiped out any day. So what's going on now is like a match compared to a forest fire. When Iran revolted in 1978, they were the world's largest importer of US weaponry. Their military tech was current for over a decade. An American vessel was attacked once by Iran in 1988. They slightly damaged our ship and in an afternoon we sunk half of their fleet. And that was when their weapons arsenal was still fairly recent. The Russian military has 450,000 casualties already, plus the 50,000 that they lost through Wagner. They are struggling to mobilize another 300,000. Ukrainian drones have taken out Russian oil refineries, which are a necessity now that they've switched to a wartime economy. And then there's the problem with Russia's population. In 1990, the population of the Soviet Union, which was run by Russia, was 290 million people. Russia's current population, 144 or 145 million. The power of Russia is a fraction of what it was when it controlled the Soviet Union. Now, China is the only country that could possibly wage war to scale with the United States. They have the manpower, they have the economy, and they have the production capacity for it. Their biggest weakness is that they are the largest importer of food and energy. So a blockade would destroy that country from within very quickly. War with the West is not what China is looking for. They may at some point try to take back Taiwan, but they are trying to gain a very large sphere of influence. They are absolutely bullying their neighbors in the Southern Pacific, like the Philippines, Vietnam. They're trying to claim Indian territory, but India is fighting them back. They are not gonna get directly involved in any kind of major conflict. The greatest deterrent keeping us away from World War III is NATO, an alliance of over 32 of the most powerful countries on Earth. An attack on any one of those countries means war with the US and everybody else. Do you know which country has the world's largest air force? Yes, the United States. Do you know which country has the world's second largest air force? The United States Army. Russia has the third largest air force, and then the Navy has the fourth. So our enemies would be going to war with that, and then the top 20 military powers of the world, plus 10 other countries. What's comedic is that if Russia, China, or Iran did declare war on NATO, they would have no means of invading any NATO country. Only the United States and NATO have the logistical capacity to launch any kind of full-scale invasion. So these countries would most likely just try to launch missiles at us, which would be easily trackable by one of the US's 4,500 satellites out of the 6,000 that exist. And of course you guys are gonna say, well, what if they launch nukes? Iran doesn't have nukes. They were dangerously close to making a nuke in 1979, and they're still dangerously close. China is not gonna launch nukes against the West because they still desperately wanna do business. And of course there's Russia with the world's largest nuclear stockpile. Putin might be crazy enough to try it. Those nukes probably don't work. The vast majority of Russia's nuclear devices haven't been maintained in decades. We don't know if any of them are suitable for launch. And if they are, we don't know if they have the capability of actually 
launching them, which means that mutually assured destruction is no longer a guarantee. And there's the chance that the missiles delivering those nukes may not be able to escape the atmosphere and just land back in Russia. To sum this up as to why we're not going into World War III, one, tensions have been much, much higher than where we are now. Second, two out of our three enemies don't have anywhere near the scale to go against us. And the third, China just doesn't want to. And the last reason, nobody stands a chance against NATO. I'm the Geo Hussar and don't worry, we're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. Thanks for watching.